Hey there, Trista Polo here with this week's Plate Story. We meet Helen in this episode. She's a former speech therapist who specialized in aphasia, losing your ability to speak from an injury or damage to your brain. She's moved into coaching now and loves the opportunity to help people find their voice at work, in love, and within themselves. Now, can you guess her license plate? It's speak. Perfect, right? Helen is a voice and communication expert. She's a TEDx speaker coach and an author. Her book, Voice Unleashed, Speaking Faith and Courage, comes out on audio November 8th, and she's holding a launch party that'll be jam-packed with content for writers and speakers alike. The event is free of charge, and you should bring your own cake because it's also her birthday celebration. We talk about Helen's coaching style and her book. She also shares the lessons that she has learned about communication from her children and her 24-year marriage to her husband. But first, some plate story news. Ohio has a new license plate design. As the birthplace of the Wright brothers, they put the very first airplane on the top of the plate with a banner flying behind the plane saying, birthplace of aviation. Oops, wait, that's not right. They put the banner on the wrong end and it's actually flying from the front of the plane, making it look like the plane is flying in reverse. Well, that's a bit backwards. The plate design has been recalled and is being corrected. The new one will be available in mid-December, and the error is costing a reprinting in the area of about 35,000 plates. I bet some of those misprints will show up on eBay eventually. What do you think? When I heard this story about an Ohio plate, I thought it was odd because I remember visiting Kitty Hawk where the first flight was, and I'm not great at geography, but I know I was in North Carolina, not Ohio. But since the Wright brothers were born in Ohio, they take credit as the birthplace of aviation. See what they did there? North Carolina Department of Transportation didn't miss the opportunity to take a dig at Ohio for this. Apparently, the rivalry around this issue between the two states is about as old as flight itself. Because while the Wright brothers were born in Ohio, their first flight was in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. There's a whole Wright Brothers Museum there, and you can even walk on the actual ground where the plane took off successfully for the first time. In reply to this mistake hitting the news, the North Carolina Department of Transportation account tweeted, y'all leave Ohio alone. They wouldn't know, they weren't there. Has an error like this ever happened where you work? What happened and how did your organization resolve it? Leave a comment and let me know. Now let's go meet Helen. Welcome to this week's episode. I'm super excited to have Helen Moses. Her license plate is Speak, and she's from Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome, Helen. Hello, Trista. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you. So tell me the story behind why you chose that as your license plate. Sure. Well, speaking is very important to me. I am a coach for people who speak, both in communication and in giving presentations and in empowering people's voices. So speaking is very important to me. And I want to encourage everyone else to use their voice. So it, I see it as a, you know, a, a incentive or an invitation, if you will, to people who are following me on the highway, speak, you know, your voice is important. And I, my business is called Speak Up Communications. So I actually looked for Speak Up and that wasn't available, but Speak was. And I thought, you know what? That's actually even better. I like that even better. So that's the real story behind it. I was just thrilled to get it. And I love it. Every time I see it, it makes me very happy. <laughs> I love that. And you believe in manifesting your life as well. And you had shared when we first spoke that that's sort of the thought behind it as well. Like speak your life yes. into reality. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, well, you know, you can speak things into existence. You can speak them out loud and then the vibrations affect the rest of the world, right? They, other people hear it. You are held more accountable for it. You and more people are on the lookout for it. Of course, you know, God spoke the, the universe into existence according to what I believe. And so that's pretty powerful stuff that we can do with our voices. So if we speak something out loud, there's so much more likelihood that it's going to actually come 
to be. Yeah, I believe that as well. I think that we create our lives on purpose. So I'm very on board with all of that. I'd love to hear how have you used the manifesting, the speaking things into existence to create the life you have now? I, I haven't always been as good at it as I am currently and will continue to become. But I, I would say that in the past 10 years, a little more than five, five to eight years, maybe I've been on a journey. I find myself um, having completed the hardest part, what I think and I hope is the hardest part of this journey uh, so far. But I didn't start out as a voice coach with a true understanding of the value of my own voice and my own personal worth. And that didn't allow me to manifest things with my voice because I wasn't speaking in my truth. I wasn't aligned with my truth and, and the value that I didn't recognize that I had. So since I, I got a, I had a coach who kind of called me out on that, I was saying, I, I can help people sound confident when they speak. And uh, she said, well, you, you can't do that because I've never heard you sound confident when you speak. Wow. Um, so that was a hard thing. As you can imagine, it feels like you're just kind of knocked off your feet there. And in that moment, I was just kind of stunned and shocked and, and exposed, you know, kind of felt exposed, like, oh my gosh, she's just shown everybody that I'm a fake. <laughs> but as I have reconciled myself with that and kept coaching with her, I, I didn't stop. That turned out to be one of the best gifts I've ever received was that awareness that I was hiding still. Part of me was still hiding. So to since then, I've done several things to speak up with heart, to speak up with faith and courage. One of them is, is my book. It's called Voice Unleashed speak up with faith and courage, my story of how that came to be. And then of course, I, I it's not just about me. I, I wrote this for people who might be on a similar journey and want to understand some things they can think about that might help them move to the next step. So the book happened and something else really exciting about the book happened when I spoke and asked, took, took the time, took the courage, did the preparation, to ask someone that I wasn't sure would have the time or interest in writing the foreword for that book. And I did, I asked Bishop Michael Curry to write it and he did write it and he's internationally known and from the Episcopal church, he, he preached at Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding. I had some connections to him, which I, I leveraged, but ultimately I, I asked him if he would do it. And that's something I could never have imagined doing before, having that belief that what I had to say was, was worth asking someone like him with, with the voice as powerful as his to lend his voice to my book. And, uh, and I asked him if he would read it for the audiobook version. So his voice is there in my audiobook reading the forward. That's samples. amazing. It's pretty amazing. He's an amazing yeah. man. Yeah. And it just shows that speaking isn't just about speaking out. It's also about making requests and being willing to ask for help, being mm -hmm. willing to be vulnerable. Yep. I have a very similar journey to yours. Yeah. I was an amazing speaker. I was a powerful leader. I was all that and a bag of chips and it was all an act. It was not authentic. It was me pretending so nobody would really see what a piece of crap I thought of myself. Yeah. And I went through my own journey of really facing that reality and realizing, you know, first you have to admit you have a problem, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, just kind of figuring out who I was, owning who I was. And then being it authentically. And so to a lot of people who knew me then know me now, to them, I'm the same. Mm -hmm. 
But the difference is now I really believe it myself instead of hoping you believe it over there because I don't believe it myself. So self-worth you talked about has a huge impact on who I was and who I am now. And it sounds like it has for you as well. So how has self-worth played a role in that journey? Well, before I went on the the journey to to discover my self-worth and and claim it and and recognize I needed to do it, that was kind of that awareness that you're talking about, (laughs) right? It's it's trans it's transformational the work to to find your self-worth to understand it and you know i i've come to this revelation that's nothing new it's it's been there as, as old as the universe that that all creations all human beings are of equal value and equal worth there's really nothing that anyone can do to change their value or their worth now they can make choices and and have behaviors that cause them to get into trouble or cause people to want to avoid them or you know they can choose behaviors but they can't they can't cancel their own value or their own worth and so i just know too many people that are going around unable to see that they that they matter unable to see that their voice both literally and metaphorically can make a big difference and and is is meant to you know it's not just oh one day everyone can speak up and make a difference it's no it's just living your life and living it with some sense of purpose that's speaking out loud living your life out loud following your purpose out loud. And so for the self-worth piece for people out there who may be going, "Eh, I don't really understand what my value is. I don't really understand how I can be worth something because X, Y, and Z, all these things happened to me. I never did this. I'm not good enough. I want to help people reframe that and see everything that they've experienced so far, all of their choices so far, all of their relationships, all of their ideas and um, dreams and talents and, and everything, all of it is part of what their voice is today and what makes it so valuable. And it's unique because nobody else has it. So I get really excited when I start, start finding a way to share that with people. And when I see someone have that transformation that we, you and I have both been through of not having to show up as an act or perform or pretend to be somebody they're not, but they can actually feel like, yes, I can just be Helen. I can just be Trista today. I don't have to do anything else. That's enough. That's all that matters. That lights me up like nothing else when that happens. And I see that transformation. Mm, I love that. Before you were a coach, you were, you're, you're a speech well, right? That's right. I worked as a speech language pathologist or speech therapist. And the, the majority of the people that I worked with were people who had aphasia or some other language or speech impairment due to a brain injury or a stroke. And aphasia is when your language is impaired. It affects your ability to speak, understand, write, read in all various kinds of ways. And one thing that's clear from all the research is that no one person's aphasia affects them exactly the same as anyone else's. But I had this privilege, I would say, to work with these folks who had suddenly had their voice literally sometimes and metaphorically taken away from them and their families. You know, this is a very fundamental need to be able to communicate with people that we love and and do that on a daily basis, share our hearts and our thoughts. And when that's just taken away from you suddenly, I mean, that's enormous in terms of an impact on you. So I learned when I worked with them, I was like, look, oh my gosh, these people went from one afternoon being fine to to that night not being fine. I'm not going to take my voice for granted. And I want to share that message with the world. Don't take your voice for granted. We take everything for granted, all of it. I mean, whoever 
everyone can come up with something. Don't take whatever for granted. For me, it's the voice. Don't take your voice for granted. It is, it is such an amazing gift for you and for everybody else um, who hears it. You know, your insights, your opinions could mean the difference between something not going very well and something that creates a movement down the road. I mean, it, it really matters. And your ability to connect with people really matters. So that's that's one of the things that I got from that work as a speech therapist. I, I don't work officially as a speech therapist anymore, but I certainly rely heavily on my training and my experience um, helping people regain a sense of communication and connection when I do yeah, that coach my clients. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask is how much of that training do you bring into coaching? I have a whole toolbox full of public speaking techniques, confidence building techniques, ways to get insight on what matters to you and what's important for you to speak up about. Yeah, absolutely. So who are your clients? What are people looking to achieve when they hire you as a coach? Like what are the issues they're asking for? They're, they're coming and they're saying, I can't get out of my head. I'm always, all my thoughts are in my head. I can't be present when I'm speaking to people. I'm always worried about how I'm going to come across. That's one thing people will tell me. I've had people tell me, um, I just got moved into this new position and I want to make sure that the people that are reporting to me and the people that I'm reporting to know that I actually belong here, I've, I deserve or I earn, have earned the right to be in this position. I've also had people tell me they want to get to the next level and for whatever reason, they keep getting overlooked. And so they want me to help, under, help them figure out what might it be, is there anything about the way they talk or, or speak up or don't that could be causing them to not get promoted or not get seen and recognized the way they want to. Those are some. People tell me sometimes it's just a quick uh, client who has a presentation coming up and we just work on making sure that it, it fits and does what they want it to accomplish. And so that those are shorter term clients, but the ones who stay with me three to six months, typically, uh, they are the ones who are their speakers or entrepreneurs or professionals who speak or give presentations, lead meetings. And what, ha what they all have in common is that they don't have a clear understanding of their value or how to leverage that, how to communicate that, how to speak in a way that reflects that value so that others can see it without being arrogant or you know, egotistical or, or condescending in any way. That makes sense. I was thinking about public speakers or people who were afraid of public speaking mm -hmm. or wanted to be public speakers or wanted to be better public speakers. You could probably help people in those categories very easily as yes. well. Yes, yeah. very much so. Yeah. Awesome. Now you have a book. It mm -hmm. is just out on audio and you are having a launch party for it. So let's talk about that because that's very exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. It is exciting. I published my paperback version and the ebook about a year ago in September of 2020. So I'm celebrating the one year anniversary, the birth, the first birthday of that. And the audio book just came out last month. And uh, so it's the, the birth of the audio book as well, which is in my voice. And of course, Bishop Curry's voice for the forward, but that that's very exciting. So I'm having this party, it's on Zoom and anyone can come. We're gonna celebrate people's voices through writing and through speaking in audiobooks. So I'm hoping that we'll get a lot of people who either have always wanted to write a book or have written books, but that, that can come and share and talk about their ideas and, and what they've written about or want to write about whether or not they would want to do an audiobook version, would they want to speak? If not, who would they want, whose voice would they want to speak for their audiobook? So it's just questions like that to get excited. I have someone from the studio where I did the recording to come and, and talk about what that experience is like and answer people's questions. And I'll have a few little things to give away throughout the party as well. Oh, and very that important. That sounds like fun. Oh, very important. Bring your own cake. 
because it's a birthday celebration. Yay! <laughs> and, and it also happens to be my own birthday. So I want to share my birthday with all these other people who have these amazing ideas about the books and, and that sort of thing. So, but you bring your own cake. That's, that's important. That's beautiful. I love that it's not just a launch for you, but you're providing a ton of value for your attendees. And it's open to everyone, right? Any yeah. Is there a, a fee for it? There's no fee. No, there's no okay, fee. Okay, great. So it's a party. Show up and, and get great party. value and help you celebrate your birthday. That's right. For one hour. I love it. We'll, well, it starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time on November 8th, which is a Monday. I love it. I love it. I love it. So in addition to speaking, you use your voice for something else as well. I do. I like to sing. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Where do you do most of your singing? Most of it is at my church and my choir. I'll tell you this. Recently, I had the honor of singing at a funeral. And this was for a man who was in his 90s, actually a World War II veteran, and his wife, because they both died during COVID. And they finally got to have the memor memorial service. But this man heard me sing at my church 20 years ago, maybe. And ever since then, he kept telling me, I want you to sing at my funeral. I want you to sing at my, I'm serious, Helen. I want you to sing at my funeral. So I, I kept telling him, yes, yes, sir, I will do that. And you have to promise me to make that as far away from now as possible. So he did his job. It took him about 20 years before that happened. Wow. Um, and I felt his presence and, you know, just what an honor to be able to do that for, for him, for his wife, for the, for the family, for the people there. And to be, to be able to give of my voice is pretty special. And even every Sunday, just singing with the choir, it feels really good. I've had a few occasions to sing in a band type situation. And I kind of love that. I kind of love <laughs> being behind the microphone and, and singing in a, a different way than, than what I typically do in church. And of course, I'm a classically trained singer. That was my college degree, my bachelor's degree. And, and that's very, very formulaic, very technique oriented. And I'm grateful for yeah. all of that. But sometimes just that free flowing, just singing from the heart, that, that's the experience I had behind those microphones the few times I had those where I just could be free and let my voice go without worrying about the technique. Um, sure. What so, kind of music were you singing in the bands that you participated? One of them was a, a church band that I had assembled uh, not because it was an event, a woman's event. In fact, this, this cover is from a painting that I had commissioned to remind me of that experience of singing. And that was when I, I kind of let go of my, the expectations and the fear that I had that the people in my church who weren't used to this kind of music would uh, kick me out of the choir or what, I mean, I really worried about that. That never happened, but I really did worry about that. Isn't it funny how we have so many fears and the majority of them are just unfounded. They're so much, they're so unfounded. We yes. make them up and we project yes. them on everybody. And then we believe them. <laughs> and then we believe them and they're not yeah. true. And so that's one yeah. question that I'll ask people all the time is what, you know, who said that to you? Well, you know, they'll say, this is going to happen. This is not going to be good. And I'll say, well, who, whose voice are you hearing? Who said that? And maybe there's a voice from their past, a parent, someone critical, but most of the time they pause <laughs> they're like, well, no one actually said that to me. Right. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. Now I wanted to ask you, you talk a lot about speaking mm -hmm. and speaking your truth and speaking up and speaking your life into existence. What are your thoughts on listening? Oh gosh, I'm so glad you asked that question. Okay, because yes, I'm all about speaking, but you've also heard me use the word communication which is a two-way process. And one of the things that I am becoming more and more drawn to is how I can be helpful and influential in, in bringing people who have different opinions to a table 
to have a conversation. Not an argument, not an elevation of everybody's voices, but a true conversation. And that cannot happen without listening. That, that has to be the first step. We talked earlier about how there's value in everyone's voice. So that mindset needs to be in play. And sometimes the best way you can speak up is to listen. And not just be in silence while they're talking and plan the next thing you're going to say, aha, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to counter that argument. But listen with curiosity. Listen to try to understand why they feel the way they do. What's led them to that? Because I argue that even if what we believe is irrational or could be proven false, there's a reason why we stand up and say we believe this. Something has led us to this point some series of things. And that's where we can start to find something in common. That's the other thing. When you listen, look for what you have in common with the other person. Sometimes you have to start with, well, we're both human beings. Back sometimes, to basics if we need to, right? <laughs> sometimes we have to start there. And I think this whole concept of speaking up with heart and speaking with empathy is totally about listening as a component of that. It, it can't happen without it. Yeah, because if there's somebody speaking and there's no one listening, it's like the tree in the forest. It is. Did it make it a is. difference, right? Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. I love that analogy. What? Of course the tree makes noise. That's the question. Does the tree make any noise? Well, yes, of course it does. But does it matter? I love that. Now, you're not just a coach. You're also a mom and a wife. Tell me a little about your uh, personal side. Okay. I have, I have been married for 24 years now. We met through my church and he is very much a good balance for me. We are, you know, they say opposites attract. We are opposites in many ways, which has been very good because we, we kind of balance each other out. We have two children. We have a son who's 21 in his fourth year at college and a, a daughter who is 16. She's a junior in high school. And uh, it has been quite the honor and the challenge to be their mother. I have learned so much. They have taught me more than anything else in this world. No one else, no course I've ever taken, no coach that I've coached with, not even my husband. And he's taught me a lot, have taught me as much as my two children. And, and the main thing that they have taught me is just to talk about using your voice authentically. You know, I, I used to worry so much about them and what would happen to them because they, you know, like they have their own challenges. Both of them have had anxiety and depression. That's something that's fairly common. So I can say that without going into details, but especially when they were in those, those moments, I would worry so much. And, and then I would speak to them and they would kind of shut me out. And I, they've taught me that I was bringing in this energy and this voice that they interpreted as criticism or disappointment in them. And I was just trying to find the words. I mean, there's so many times I would like walk away and go, dang, I can't even, I don't even know what to say. I can't even talk to my own children. But in those moments now, I don't try. I just show up. I say, I love you. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's all I do. Sometimes that's so much more powerful than asking them questions that come across to them as, as criticism and judgment that they're not good enough. That's the last thing I want to show them with the way I speak. So um, of course, of course. I think they've, they've taught me a lot. And I also think they've been watching me and I, it's been fun to see them begin to advocate for themselves and find some joy and a little bit of purpose in their lives. That's been really fun. And I, and I will tell you that I will take a little bit of credit for modeling some things that have been positive for them. And that's something I wouldn't have tried to do before because that sounded too arrogant or whatever, but I think more moms need to recognize and dads need to recognize that what they say and do does matter and especially the good stuff.
it really does make a difference for the kids. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing a little bit about your family life. And I'm just thinking about, you know, my friends and family that have children and are raising them. And I'm sure that, that there's a lot of that. I just want the best for you. And what the child hears is, you know, maybe get off my back or you're judging me or I'm not good enough. And it just reminds me that, like you said earlier, communication's a two-way street. It's not just what we're saying, it's how what we're saying is landing for the other person. And I think that there is a gift in being willing to be responsible for how we're heard. My husband and I have been married for 25 years and he, I come from a family where the, my grandparents were married for over 50 years I mean, they were married until my grandfather passed and that they would yell at each other really loud, <laughs> you know? And so for me, like that's part of being married is sometimes you yell really loud and he can't be with it. It's, it doesn't work for him. Mm -hmm. And so he's gotten really good at being able to say, you're yelling at me and I need you to stop yelling at me. And then I can say, oh yeah, that's right. That worked in my grandparents' marriage. It doesn't work here. Yeah. And then I can be responsible for doing, you know, for impacting him with my communication. And then I can change what I, so it's like a two-way street. Like I have to be responsible for how my communication lands, but I have to also be responsible about how your communication is landing for me. And that is advanced communication, right? Where we can mm -hmm. both be responsible, not only for what we're saying, but how we're being heard mm -hmm. as well. Very so, advanced. <laughs> uh, very advanced. <laughs> 25 years of marriage. You got to figure it out, right? You've yep, been married 24 do. years. 24. Anybody who's been married over, probably even over 10 years knows that if you're still happy, you're doing it on purpose and it takes work for it. it does, it's not a uh, fairy tale. It's not a happily ever after. And they rode off into the sunset. Maybe that's good for a year. <laughs> Yeah, then that's about it. I'm working at it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, you just reminded me that early on in, in our, I think it was after we were married, we, we dated for five years before we got married. So I, I think it was after we got married. But anyway, early on in our relationship, my husband would say to me, don't use that teacher voice with me. And I thought, well, how can I help it? I mean, I'm just trying to explain something to you, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> And I got the first that just got really mad, but uh, he hasn't accused me of that in a long time. And I think that's because I've done the work to change. Something about the teacher voice was negative to him. And probably in those moments, what was most important to me was to be right. And that's why it came across as the teacher, the negative teacher. So, Recognizing what's behind what you're saying is also valuable and part of this process that we experience as we age in our, our marriages and other relationships is what, what are we, what's the purpose behind what we say? Why are we saying what the, we say? And when someone tells us and responds that we're coming across in a way that we, we think we didn't intend, maybe underneath, we did, and it's worth a little bit of self-examination and trying to let things go and reframe things and come across in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you have so much knowledge about not just speaking from the clinical side, but also speaking your truth. And you're clearly really out to help people raise up their worth. Yes. And I'm all about that too. So I, I really acknowledge you for the work you're doing. I congratulate you for your book and having it come out on audio. And there will be a link in the show notes, not only to your YouTube channel and ways people can connect with you, but if they want to participate and join in on the celebration and get that awesome content that you're offering as your book launch, audio book launch, we'll have that in the show notes for people as well. I just love your mission in the world and I wish you all the best with it, especially with your launch. So I hope that there will be people listening to this that will show up and, and be part of that. And I wanna thank you so much for being on today. 
Well, it has been really fun. I've enjoyed it a Good. lot. And um, I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Helen. I wish you all the best and we will see you soon. Sounds good. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to Trista's Plate Story podcast, share it, or leave a review. If you would like to nominate a license plate to be featured in a future episode, or you have an interesting Plate Story news item to share with me, leave us a comment or visit platestory.com. That's P L number eight story.com and give me all the details. This is Trista Polo wishing you well on the road to your next adventure.